Hi, welcome to this practical section in the Galaxy Trinit Network. So we will do the course quality and contamination control in bacterial tissues using Illumina MySeq data. My name is Claire Siguré, a French bioinformatician, and we're going to start straight away. So I will share my screen. So here you can see the notes of the training. So the basic knowledge to use Galaxy is to know how to log, to run tools, and you can try to do uh, this course and transition to Galaxy Analysis. So today we will work on next generation sequencing reads using uh, parent read from Illumina MySeq data. So today uh, I will I will show you this training we on the Galaxy front server, and you can use other server if you are comfortable with it or if you have access to. So there are challenges in this tutorial that you can try. I will answer a three of them, but I will leave quite a free for you to do in your own time. So if you want to know other information in quality control, in parent analysis, or other next generation sequencing data, you can try to do uh, the course quality control in the Galaxy Training Network. So this tutorial is all about sequencing reads and understanding how the reads that come of the sequencer have some quality associated with them and to identify the species in your data to see if you have contamination or not. So now it's important to understand what this, these errors are and to see what you need to do depending on your analysis, to know if you need to filter or exclude some reads and to just identify errors. So the best way to get started is to create a new history if you didn't done it already. So you create a new history and I will call my history quality and contamination control and you need to save it. So now we have uh, our new history and we need to import some data sets. Today we will analyze to fast Q file because we will work on parent analysis. So they come from the Synodo server, so we need to copy them and to upload them in the past fetch data tool and to click on start. You will see them in your history. So here we have our two files. So they are raw data of a bacterial genome from sequencing data produced in incomplete genome sequences of eight methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus strains isolated from present in Japan. So the name is specific of the study and we will rename them, we will just remove the extension to begin for each data set and we will tag them too in unfiltered because it's raw data data set here so here we have our two data sets fasco files and we have some question what are the four main features of each read in the FASC file? And what does the one and two mean in your file names? So to respond to this question, we will click on the view icon. As you can see, you have four different lines. The first line begins with an at symbol 
and with the name of the read and some information. The second line is always the nucleotide sequence. So you have basis with G, T, A, and C. The first line, it's always begun, begin with a plus. And you can have some other information that can be sometimes the same of the, the first line. The fourth line, it's the quality score per base of the nucleated seconds. Each symbol represents the quality score, the confidence, and you can see that you can have different symbol, letter, number, symbols, and so on. So for the second question, what does the one and two mean in your file name? The one and the two refer of the forwards and refers reads of parent data. So the one refer to the forward and the two refer to the reverse. Sometimes it can be also an F on an R, or you can have also R1 and R2. So like I said at the beginning of this video, if you want to know more of quality control, you can see the quality control tutorial in the Galaxy Training Network. So now to understand the quality scores that we saw, we will try we will try to use the tool FastQC. So we just need to search the tool FastQC and to put no two data set like we select here and to just run the tool. So here we have the tool launch in our history. We just need to wait that the tool finished. Okay, so my first QC run are finished. Uh, so you have two files for each data set. You have a raw data file, it's a text file, and a web page for each data set to understand more the, the result. So I will open more of my window and see the first result. So some basic statistic. We can see that um, the appendix of the sequence is Sanja Ilumina 1.9. Again, it's going to be the most common out there. We have more than 451,000 sequences with a length between um, 50 to 300 base pairs. And we can see it's the most common um, quality, picture quality used. You can see that you have here the length of your seconds and the quality here. You have three sections. The green part says that it's a good quality, orange for major quality, and the red part for bad quality. For each position of the post plot, you will have the median value represented by the red line, the intercartile and represented by the yellow box, the 10% and the 90% values is the upper and the lower whiskers, and the mean quality represented by the blue line. 
So how we can see here, um, the quality score decrease, the mean quality score decrease at the second hand, but it's quite common to have that. Um, it's more correct to have some things like that at the beginning. For Illumina data, it's normal that the first three bases are some lower quality and how long longer the reads are. And it's the same for the second data set. We have the same number of sequences, the same length, and you can see that the hand of the seconds have bad quality, but it's not quite bad. So now it's to improve the quality of seconds. We saw that the quality was not quite bad, but the hand of the seconds was lower than 20, um, the score 20. So now we will fit, filter the read and keep only read with at least 30 bases and with a quality score of 20. So we will use the tool FASTPI to improve our quality of the seconds. So we need to search the tool FASTPI to improve our quality. We are analyzing their read. So the first input is the one, the forward read, and the second, the second. So we will keep only read with at least a length minimum to 30. We record quality, the quality in front and in tail, cutting window size to four and cutting mean quality to 20. And we can run the tool. So here you can see, you we just need to wait the result. So we launch the tool FASPI to remove the, the end of the reads that have bad quality. And so we filter the read. So now we will remove the unfiltered tag on the FASP outputs and put a new tag, a feature it. So we just need to remove this tag, put this one, and do the same for the other output. Here. So now you see that fast QC, we have the tag in feature, and we fast P, we have the tag Filtered. So FASTP have here three output. So we have the trim read, the trim read one. So it's for the forward read. And we have the trim read two. So it's for the reverse read. We have also an HTML report like FASTQC. So we will click, so we will click on the HTML report with the view icon. As you can see, you have several results. So we have some question. How does the average read length change before and after featuring? The trimming improve the mean quality scores. The trimming affect the GC content, and is this data data okay to assemble? Do we need to resequence it? So it's several question we need to answer every time that we check the quality of our data and filter the read. So how you can see, we have before filtering. Um, the length, the mean length was 119 base pairs and 
221 bears there. After filtering, we just change it to 189 base pair and 299 base pair. So how we can see, so we have the duplication rate, it's not so bad. And we can see to the quality scores. So you see that before filtering, we have 94% of our bases that have quality score to 20 and 84% of quality to 30. After filtering, we pass to 99% of quality 20 of passes. So it's in, it's increased. And we have like the same 84.63 quality 30 basis. So it's mm. good. So the three questions, the first question was determining affects the GC content. As you can see that after before filtering, it was around 32 GC content and it didn't change after filtering. So it didn't affect the GC contact and it's it's expected to to, to be the same. I think with this those results, we can say that the data looks okay. The number of short reads in the first data set is not optimal, but we can assemble um, the data set. But today it's just to see the, the, the quality of the on, of on our data and to filter the result if we need it. So we mm -hmm. will not assemble today if if you, you need to to try another tutorial to do the assembly. But we can check the contamination of our data after the filtering to see if it's okay and if it's possible to assemble. So like I said just before, we need to do a new analysis to check the contamination of our data and if we need or not to remove some read. So first is to use the tool Kraken2 with per data with a minimum base quality of 10 and to create a report to with aggregate count and Clyde. And we will select a Kraken2 database. So we need to judge the tool Kraken2 parent analyzing. We need to select the win one output of SP, the so read two for the reverse, change minimum best quality with 10, curate report, we need to print a report with aggregate count client file, and we need to get the code database. It's it's this one, and plus PF 16, and run the tool. So here we have the two output of Kraken 2 with the tag filtered. So here we have a two output of, from Kraken 2. So we have a classification file as you can see, we have we have five columns. 
with the first column, it's one letter indicating if the sequence is classified or unclassified, with a C for classified and U for unclassified. The second column, it's the sequence ID as in the input file. The third column, it's the NCB high taxonomy ID, I think to the seconds. If it's unclassified, it's zero. The fourth column, it's the length of the seconds in base, base pair. So we have here the read one and the read two with a pair. So it's because we have pair reads. The fifth column, it's a space delimited list indicating the lowest common ancestor, my P of each K mirror in the seconds. So we have several questions. Is the first sequence in the file classified or unclassified? We can see here that it's a C, so it's a classified sequence. What is the taxonomy ID I think to the first classified sequence? So here we can see that it's 1,280. And what is the corresponding Taxon of this taxonomy ID, it's Staphylococcus aureus. The second output, it's a report file. So here we have six columns. So the first column, it's a percentage of fragment covered by the clade root at this taxon. The second column is the number of fragments covered by the clad roots at the taxon. The third column is the number of fragments assigned directly to this taxon. And the fourth column is the wrong code indicating if it's unclassified, a root, a domain. You can have the phylum too, the class, the order, the family, the genus and the species. The fifth column, it's a NCBI taxonomy ID number, like we saw in the classification file. And the sixth column uh, indicates the scientific name of the taxon. So how many taxa have been found? So we can check with the number offline of the report file we saw that we have 627 lines. So we have 627 taxa. What are the percentage on unclassified seconds? So here we have 0.24% of unclassified sequences. And what are the domain found? We can see here with the D that we have only box layer sequences. So here with Kraken 2, we saw that we have we have a lot of staph staphylococcus sequences here. So it's expected because we have data set from staph staphylococcus aureus. So even if we have good results in Kraken, um, we have a lot of false positive, so we need to use Bracken to refine the result of Kraken and estimate an abundance of species. So we we will now launch the tool Bracken to have um, identification of the species. So we need to search the tool Bracken. So here, we need to use the report of Kraken2. We need to use the same database of Kraken. So it was plus PF16. We want to know the species level. 
and we want to produce Kraken style Bracken report. And we can run the tool. So we have the two output from Bracken. We have a report file and a report like Kraken. So the Kraken style report, it's the same. So how many taxa have been found? So we can check the number of lines and we have 119 lines. So we have 119 lines taxa found. What is the family found? So we need to check the rank and we saw that the family is at 99% from Staphyloco kake. And we can see too that the species is 95% from Staphylococcus aureus. The second file, so the report of Bracken, we have seven columns. So we have the taxon name, the taxonomy ID, the taxonomy level, the Kraken ISN reads, the added read with abundance reestimation, re the total read after abundance reestimation, and the fraction of total read. So how many species have been found? So we can check the number of lines. So we have 52 lines, but we have an either at the first line. So we have 51 species found. Which the species have been the most identified and in which proportion? So the species that we found is at 95% of the read from Staphylococcus aureus. What are the other species? So like we saw in the Kraken style report, we have a lot of Staphylococcus um, genus. So most of the species come from the Staphylococcus genus, same as Staphylococcus aureus. But the proportion of other species is low. So we can say that the species that, the species that we have is from Staphylococcus aureus. So even if we check the species of our data, we have 90% of Staphylococcus aureus. Do we need to check if we have contamination of our data with the tool Recentifuge? So we will launch Recentifuge in the Galaxy server with the classification output from Kraken. And we will use a NCB high database and we want to have a TSV file, a tabular file, and we will use a fine tuning of Iberium parameters. So now we need to search the tool Recentifuge here. So we need to use the classification file from Kraken. So the tip of input file is from Kraken. We will use the database of 2023. We want to have a TSV file, no log file, and we want to, to use fine tuning of algorithm parameter. And um, yes, to and run the tool. So we have three output from Recentifuge. We have a statistic table, like you can see here, with two columns. So how many sequences have been used? So we can see that we have 
more than four hundred fifty one thousand sequences. How many seconds have been classified? So we can see here that more than 450,000 seconds have been classified. See, this is quite good. So the second output is the data table. So how many taxa have been kept? So we have 189 lines. So if we remove the, the three other lines, we have 186 taxa kept. What is the lowest level in this data? So the lowest level is the strain, like you can see here. And it's Staphylococcus aureus, of course. The third output or recent refuge is an HTML report. So what is the percentage of classified seconds? You can see here that it's 99.8%. When we click on Staphylococcus aureus, what can we say about the strange? So the strange are here. The most classified seconds, it's only 0.3%. So it's not good. So we can say that probably because they are too similar strain, we just have to have Staphylococcus aureus because we have 99% of over Staphylococcus aureus. So as, is there any contamination? There is no sign of a possible contamination. Most sequences are classified to taxon on the Staphylococcus aureus and Gynus Staphylococcus. So we can say that it's okay because we just have 3% of the seconds that are not classified to staphylococcus. So if, if we have any contamination, we need to remove the contamination sequences with some tools like BBDuck. So Duck is for decontamination using camera. You can find these tools in Galaxy. But here for this tutorial, it's you can use the FASTP result, the FASTP trimming grid to assemble to a genome. So in conclusion, we inspect the quality of the sequencing data, check if we have any species potential contamination. So we prepare short read to be used in other analyses like genome assembly, yes, yeah, like you can found here. You can check even after the assembly if you have a possible contamination, you can use check M tool. The tool is accessible in Galaxy. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to know more of quality control, you can follow this tutorial quality control. So if you have any feedback now, there is a fast queue here. You can put your feedback here. If you have any suggestion, it will be nice. So thank you for your attention. I will, I guess I will stop sharing now and finish by saying thank you very much for listening to, for, to this video. If you have any question, please reach out through the normal Galaxy channel and have a good week and thank you again.